and welcome to Cumberland Conversations. I'm Sally Shutt, Cumberland County's Public Information Director. This month our conversation will focus on Cumberland County's Emergency Services Department, which is responsible for the county's 911 call center, fire marshal's office, and emergency management. Our guests are Emergency Services Director Randy Beeman and Deputy Director Tim Mitchell. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Randy, start us out by giving us an overview of Emergency Services. Emergency Services is a department that provides a point of contact for all emergencies and within our department we take care of the call center. We also have our fire marshals uh, contained within that and also emergency management. Now, Tim, let's start out by looking at the 911 call center. Okay. And uh, your telecommunicators are on duty 24-7. They Hi. are, and we have um, roughly 42 telecommunicators that work um, four shifts, 12-hour shifts. Um, all emergencies start with our 911 center. Um, everything starts there. They're the hub for making sure that everybody that needs to be notified is notified. One of the biggest thing is we handle a variety of calls for our through our 911 center. Um, we dispatch for law enforcement, fire, EMS, and for several different agencies. However, um, we want to make sure that um, we get the right response to the right place as fast as we possibly can. And so that must require very special training, Randy. Tell us about the training telecommunicators receive. It does. Uh, our training curriculum encompasses the different disciplines such as law enforcement, uh, emergency call taking, very important uh, because when we have people who are calling in to the center, uh, learning how to control that situation and the caller to get that information, the accurate information in a timely fashion. We also uh, dispatch uh, fire and emergency uh, services and so those are also very important aspects in the various agencies that we interact with. Okay. Well, um, Tim, where's the center located? We're well, actually located in the sheriff's office downtown, the uh, main sheriff's office um, on the first floor. Um, our call, 911 call center is in a secured area so it's not open to the public. Um, from time to time, we will allow some tours in there from time to time on special occasions, that, that type of thing. But we're pretty much in a secure area on, on that first level. Um, and Tim, you mentioned earlier different agencies. What are the different agencies served by the call center? We currently dispatch for the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office all of our um, 20 fire stations for the county, all 20 county fire departments. Um, we also dispatch for EMS, which is um, Cumberland County EMS through Cape Fear Valley Health System. We also dispatch for Spring Lake Police and Fire, and also Hope Mills Police and Fire. Okay. About what, how would you estimate the call volume? Our call volume runs, it varies from year to year, but um, our last year, fiscal year call volume was around 310,000 calls. Um, that averages out about 26,000 calls a month, and that's just calls for service. That doesn't include any of our calls that come in on our admin lines that we have to handle that are or alarm lines. That is just actual calls for service that we, we actually take care of. Now, it's not easy for someone who's in the middle of an emergency. So, Randy, um, kind of share with us some tips for um, callers, some suggestions on how they can stay calm and the information they need to give. Absolutely important to, as much as possible, calmness is, is, is the, the key here. And that is very difficult in a time of an emergency. So there needs to be some pre-planning or thoughts. Uh, recognize and train family members to know where do you live? What is your physical address? Even though in the modern technology that we have today, when a person makes or places that call, we have that information generally on the screen uh, through our CAD system when that person places that 911 call. But we want to verify that address, so it's very important the person knows where they live. And then very quickly in their thought process, think of events of if someone has fallen, are they inside, are they outside. Uh, think about their medications, think about their medical history of all their family members so that they have some working knowledge so that when that dispatcher, that communicator 
is gathering the information. The more information, accurate information that is provided during that point of the emergency, the better we can provide the, the appropriate response of those resources to assist in removing that person from that emergency. Now, Randy, you use the term CAD. What does CAD stand for? Com Computer-aided dispatch. That is some technology that we utilize uh, throughout our system, and it is, it is a tool that our, our call takers utilize in, in response and in sending information to the responding agencies. So that kind of leads into the question for you, Tim. How has technology helped improve response times for call centers and first responders? I think it's changed a whole lot, especially in my career. Um, I've noticed that um, we're more into a computer age. Um, everything now is computer-based. We now use GIS systems as far as mapping systems to better be able to know where somebody's at. It gives us a more pinpoint accuracy. Um, we don't have to rely on um, so much getting direction, so much over the phone now. Um, our new um, computer systems, they, they'll, they'll actually pinpoint the address on the mapping for us. That information is also pa passed on to the first responders. Um, we'll, we've been fortunate enough that now most of our public safety vehicles now have a um, what we call a MCT, which is a mobile computer terminal inside the vehicle. That same information that our dispatchers are looking at now is available to the responding units in the field also. So that has helped a whole lot and it's also helped along with our times because we're not having to rely on just clocks. Everything's pushed and everything's working on the same system at this time. Okay. Well now let's move into the fire marshal's office. and. Sure. Randy, that's a very important section there for um, emergency services. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Our fire marshal's office is, is a very um, uh, sometimes complex, but also um, very much about safety and about education to our citizens within Cumberland County. Uh, of course, within the Department of Insurance, there are requirements through building codes structural design, the integrity of that structure, and that's all about keeping our public safe and our citizenry. But more focus is placed upon education, and uh, within that educational aspect, it's, it's about safety. It's about how do you take care of yourself in the uh, dangerous situations that fire can invoke upon our, our public and our residents um, within their, not only within their residences, but also in public facilities. Uh, throughout Cumberland County. So it is a very integral part of emergency services. Okay. Tim, please explain to us how the fire service works in Cumberland County, um, how the county government contracts with volunteer departments to provide service. Each department in Cumberland County is a nonprofit, but they are contracted to the county. Cumberland County doesn't own any fire trucks. We don't own any fire departments uh, or fire stations. But we are contracted. We contract to each individual fire district that has their own department. Um, the fire tax that you see on your tax bills, that money that is collected within that fire district goes to that fire department to be able to help fund and support that, that department to be able to pr provide the service that, you, that each citizen needs. Okay. Now, Randy, you mentioned education, and your your staff is going out there education, uh, educating the public. You're, you can also call, and someone could call and invite you guys to come out. Tell me about how you're out there. Ab absolutely, Ed and it's through our outreach program. It's part of outreach, uh, reaching out to the school children, special clubs, uh, civic organizations. All they simply need to do is call us. We gladly we have materials that we hand out. Uh, children are such a valuable asset uh, because they really like to participate. It's, it's the appropriate venue, if you will, to approach our youngsters at an early age because they really understand and they're easy to work with. And so we even have a smokehouse that uh, we let them go through and participate in. Uh, we, we talk about uh, how to be safe 
And also, uh, we, we train them on escape routes, always thinking about how and if there were a fire in your residence. We also encourage them to talk to their parents about that. Do we have a plan? And w if there were an event, if there was a fire in the residence, where do we meet after we get out of the house? We need to make sure. We, we do, uh, they need to count to make sure everyone's accounted for and out of the house and in a safe location. Now, there's an important part of that education team. It's uh, Sparky. The, the, Sparky. Tell me about that. Sparky is a, um, a fire truck that we utilize. Matter of fact, later on this month uh, during uh, fire safety, which is this week, of course, it's fire safety week, but also we have an event that occurs on the 26th, uh, Saturday, and at the mall from 9 to 2. And during that um, uh, activity. Sparky will be there. It is a truck. The kids love it. Uh, it actually uh, is uh, a microphone. There are, uh, it, it is remote controlled and actually can talk to the children and uh, they just, just just fall in love with, uh, with Sparky and the fire truck and it's mm -hmm. very uh, it's very rewarding to see the children as well as uh, children that are in all of us as adults. Yeah. We enjoy that. Well, before we go to break, Tim, we're entering into that holiday season. So could you share with our viewers some tips on fire safety tips as they're uh, preparing for the holidays and, and for the winter months? As we're coming up, we're coming up on Thanksgiving holidays coming up and, and Christmas holidays also. And that's one thing that we do want to to pass out to our citizens or push along to our citizens to be safe, especially during the holiday season. Um, one of our big things is with the Thanksgiving holidays coming up is we live in the South, everybody likes fried. So, you know, deep fried turkey has become a big thing lately. And um, we want to make sure if you use, if you're using a turkey cooker to that extent, don't use it on your porch or your deck to make sure that you use it in the yard and that it's well away from anything else and follow the instructions that the manufacturers put out there to be able to use these safely um, and just use caution with it, keep children away from it at all times. We don't want anybody to get with any burns or any of that thing. But one of the big things with winter time coming up is, is our fireplaces. We want to make sure that if you're going to use your fireplace during the winter time, that you make sure that you have a fire screen in place so sparks doesn't pop out onto the floor or carpet and, and start a house fire to, to that nature. One of the other things is, is um, portable heaters. A lot of people use portable heaters, just the space heaters, just to heat one room with. Um, make sure the combustible stay away. It needs to be away at least three feet from any, all, all sides. Nothing needs to be around it within three feet of it. And that, that's some good, some good um, just basic knowledge of what our thing. You can always go to our website. Um, it has, um, you can go to the county's website, link to emergency services. We have all kinds of safety tips on there and they can, they can go down through that list. If anybody has any questions, feel free to contact the office. We'll be glad to, to go over anything that you might need or any help that you would need. Well, gentlemen, we're gonna take a pause right now. And when we come back, we're gonna talk about emergency management. So thank you, and we'll hope you'll join us in just a few moments. Welcome back to Cumberland Conversations and our look at emergency services. Joining Emergency Services Director Randy Beeman is Jean Booth, the Cumberland County's Emergency Management Coordinator. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you. Jean, tell us how local government uh, prepares for emergencies. Well, here in Cumberland County, we, uh, we have a multi-phased approach to preparing for emergencies. Uh, First, we have to start with a strong foundation, which is our EOP, our Emergency Operations Plan. And we train all of our, our uh, 
partners, both public and private, both the county agencies and uh, the private agencies that assist with us. We train them and the content of the EOP and what their roles and duties are. And from there we exercise that. We do annual exercises, several different ones throughout the year that range anywhere from a severe storm uh, exercise to a weapons of mass destruction to uh, uh, hazardous materials. Uh, and it's all uh, kind of rolls together. It's, it's, uh, you improve your emergency operations plan via your uh, exercise and uh, make enhancements to that. And just each year is another cycle. Well, what are the county's responsibilities during a disaster? Uh, the the county's responsibility during a disaster is very complex. So it's this the the sum it up. It's really uh, the support the county to support the citizens, but it ranges anywhere from uh, human services, uh, damage assessment, um, uh, to support the first responders to public safety, law enforcement, uh, EMS, uh, fire, or resources when when things happen that may go beyond the capabilities of Cumberland County, uh, our assets, then we request others and we coordinate those things in. We record, we coordinate sheltering for those that need sheltering, uh, whether they're in the county or if they're uh, risk uh, counties out at the coast during hurricane, we'll shelter for them uh, if they're special needs and, and et cetera. Uh, to damage assessment uh, after a disaster, and bringing in the, the state and federal governments to, to help with you know, like FEMA to help during the recovery process. Um, Gene mentioned coordination. Randy, can you elaborate a little bit more about how important coordination is uh, during recovery um, and response, response and recovery? Absolutely. I, I think that um, without the coordination, uh, then, you, then you have no actual process in place for a successful recovery. So very significant in, in any good recovery is that you must have coordination of many and multiple agencies and therefore as we spoke about the continuous training, it is through that training you develop those uh, and you fine tune those skill sets of how do you work with the various agencies that were responding because there will be multiple agencies that from law enforcement to your fire services to your private entities, um, you, it, depending on the event, it could be industry, uh, industry representatives, it could be the American Red Cross, it could be United Way, uh, it, it could be uh, uh, the Baptist Men uh, Group uh, in recovery processes, also coordinating with our state um, uh, resource individuals from the Emergency Operations Center at the state level, uh, National Guard, uh, as well as bringing in those federal resources and working directly with FEMA representatives that will be a part of. So coordination of any event is key in the successful recovery uh, for our citizens here in the county. Now, Gene, how long have you been with emergency services and maybe share during that time some of the uh, um, emergency disasters that you've worked with? I've been with Cumberland County Emergency Services for 10 years and the last two years as the EM coordinator. Uh, beyond the uh, the major incidents that have occurred over the last few years, uh, we've also we're, we're constantly or frequently going to uh, assist the fire departments, assist uh, with hazardous material spills on the highway. As we know we have a major corridor that runs through Cumberland County up with I-95, and there's frequently incidents that do occur on inter on the interstate which has a, a, a diesel fuel spill or, or something like that, that we help coordinate the, uh, the cleanup and uh, be a liaison between the fire departments and the uh, possibly the person that caused the spill and, and ensure that those things are properly being cleaned up. And uh, we're also there if it's uh, anything that's uh, really bad to, to public health, then we're there to coordinate if, if their evacuation is needed, uh, sheltering is needed, uh, things of that matter. We also, we support the Sheriff's Department with search and rescue. Uh, we've run several calls on the river this, this summer. It was a, a pretty tough summer for that. And also, uh, uh, we've recently had a couple of bad storms that's come through the county with the, uh, in the 
southwestern portion of the county. We had a, a, what we call a downburst that did some damage to several homes and trees in the roadway. And again, where our, our agency partners are very important to us. Of course, the local fire department responded, but we also brought in the, National, the state forestry service to help clear some private roadways where the uh, uh, residents were trapped, couldn't get out of their uh, property or couldn't get back on their property. Uh, so that hinders uh, first responder response. So, yeah, there's always something going on that we're helping uh, in support of those county agencies. Well, let's talk a few minutes, Jean, about the responsibilities, citizens' responsibilities um, during emergencies, disasters, and, and some tips on how they can be prepared. Well, first of all, that's exactly right. We need to talk about the, the citizens' responsibility. And citizens are urged, they need to be to be self-reliant for at least 72 hours. And uh, things to, to remember with that is non-perishable foods. If power's out, uh, you know, they need to have something that they can provide themselves through canned food or non-perishable food. Uh, we typically uh, say that they need to be prepared to have one gallon of water per person per day. Uh, I suggest more. Yeah. Uh, the, remember, if during a disaster there may not be any power, so our credit cards or our debit cards aren't going to work. So we need to make sure we always have some cash on hand. Uh, the fortunate things with hurricanes is we have a heads up. We know that they're coming uh, days out. So we can do some things there to be prepared by going and fueling our vehicles and also uh, getting that cash that we need. It's we also need to have some things tucked away for those uh, those events that happen, especially in the springtime, those severe thunderstorms that can do some serious damage and, and be prepared for that. And especially for power outages for days, the, the power could be out for days at a time. And also we need to make sure that we're keeping an eye on the weather and that we're, we're, we're aware and cognizant of what's going on in the next few days. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's a good lead in to telling us about the county's free emergency notification service, Code Red. Right. Code Red was uh, purchased by the county uh, after the April 11th tornadoes, April 2011, April 16th, 2011 tornadoes, to uh, help support notification in the county uh, for severe weather. The, the basis of the program will. Uh, allow us to have the opportunity to notify you in a case of an emergency if there's a hazardous material spill in your area uh, and you have to evacuate then we have your information to contact you but at the same time as you register through our website top left hand corner of the county's website uh, www.co.cumberland.nc.us top left hand corner you'll see code red weather if you will click on that and fill it out what you will receive then is a phone call to your home phone and or your cell phone and uh, you can opt for text messaging also in case of a severe thunderstorm warning a tornado warning or a flash flood warning it'll also give you a text message for a winter weather warning like that really the, the, it, when you log on it really and, and sign up it helps solidify the the database that we have to contact you in other emergency situations it's not weather related and it's also businesses should sign up too, not just, I mean. Definitely. We want to really reach out to businesses in, in emergency management. Uh, one of the important parts of recovery in emergency management is our resilience and being able to get businesses back online and get economy back online and, and get things back to day-to-day -day normal uh, routines uh, for the countywide. So, Jean, what would be the main message that you would give people about being prepared, taking you know responsibility, and and so well, what was the main message to put out? To there? the main message to that would be be you know to be responsible for yourself and to to be prepared for those three days or more. I urge that those three days is just a minimum. That's a minimum uh, where you need to start. You need to prepare for longer. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, we we really push preparedness and uh, to register for Code Red. That way you're, you're always aware and cognitive of what's going on around you. 
Can you stress again for us that code red is free? Yes, it is free. <laughs> free to free to Cumberland County citizens, correct. Okay, great. Well, Randy, um, as we're kind of drawing this segment uh, to close, um, could you tell us what's the key message as the Emergency Services Director that you want to get out to Cumberland County citizens? And, and thank you for this opportunity. And it is most important. And what you, uh, the listeners have heard today is about partnerships. It's about partnerships uh, and different public agencies, not only governmental agencies, but there's a responsibility to the citizens. The citizens also need to take uh, the initiative to be prepared, as we just spoke about. It's also about those organizations that are responding, those responding agencies such as the American Red Cross uh, and the National Guard and our neighbors, as well as those volunteer organizations within our communities. I'm speaking about our fire departments. Our fire service is just a, a, a tremendous support to the community, to the fabric of the community and how they work daily. They know their communities. They know the residents within that community. They are powerful. We also have the community emergency response teams that is a growing uh, group within our county. And they also are very in, entwined within the day-to-day -day activities of the communities in which they live and work. And that is very powerful, is it's all about partnerships. And by partnering together, by strength and working together, we have a very successful recovery and we are prepared for whatever event or disaster that may come our way. So my message to the citizenry is, uh, thank you for being a part of Cumberland County government because you are a public and you are a taxpayer and we recognize that. And we as emergency services, are prepared to assist you, but we also have the expectations that you will help yourself, and it is working together in that partnering relationship. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been some wonderful information, and I hope our citizens will go and sign up for Code Red and, and seek out more information through the uh, different outlets, so thank you both. Our time is up for now. I want to thank our guests for joining us today and educating us about emergency services in Cumberland County. Thank you for listening in on our conversation. If you have any questions about today's topic, please contact the Cumberland County Public Information Office at 910-437-1921. We hope you will join us for future Cumberland Conversations. You can learn more about Cumberland County government by visiting our website or our Facebook page.